the amount that they were going to be taxed was was not a large amount. Um, and the reason that we were told that they wouldn't be taxed a large amount because was because that they're a um, they didn't use the word wind turbine, which is what it is. It's a you know we're talking a, a big power plant here. Um, they said that they were windmills and they compared them to the small structured windmills that farmers use on their farms to pump water. Um, that's not what these are. They're, they're huge towers. Uh, they take away the site of the, um, you know, the site of the mountain. When the wind facility came in, the individuals were telling the community, oh, this is a fantastic facility. We're going to employ hundreds of people. Um, it's going to create jobs for the area, opportunities for people, tourism. Um, looking at these things, they're not beautiful. There, there were supposed to be jobs come here to Marysdale from them after, after they started building. Well, I only know of that one person who had a job, and as soon as they were done and didn't need a guard anymore, he had no job. And it was a minimum wage job. When the windmill company came in, they were going to produce all these jobs. They talked as though there would be hundreds of people working. Um, they have talked about bringing in a plant to build windmill parts to service the windmills. They would employ thousands of people. They produce very few jobs. Um, and all there might be four or five people who work at the wind facility site. They brought in people from different countries. I believe a lot of the workers were from Denmark. They did employ some local individuals for security, to my understanding, at minimum wage, at a minimum wage level. They currently, I believe, hire three to four permanent people now, local people who run the facility. I have had the chance to meet with a WIN representative um, and there's been some um, correspondence via, um, via paper and very rude, very rude. The WIN companies come in to these small communities and they wine and dine the local officials and they look at us as backwoodsy hayseeds, farmers who know nothing, who look at, who think they can schmooze us with all their fancy talk and, you know, and say everything's going to be fine. And it's not. I have, I have had the opportunity to, to meet with one of the spokes, spokeswomen. Uh, and basically it was a brief confrontation. Uh, in particular, this, this person basically asked ask me what I thought could be done to improve this particular wind facility. And I'm not an engineer. I mean, it's, it's basically not my job to decide what needs to be done to improve these particular wind facilities. These folks, before they put these things in, they're supposed to have have the safety standards, have the, the nuisance issues, have all this stuff worked out. Why should I take my time and my resources when it's my tax dollars being used to build these things? Why should I take my time to figure out how to improve these things? The, the wind company would offer either some money or perhaps maybe to put new brick on your home so you don't have to, you know, hear the noise or, you know, perhaps give you a new satellite dish or, you know, things of that nature. People have been real hesitant to talk about what they've experienced because I feel the wind companies are intimidating. Uh, they are intimidating individuals. They, they come in and they are so powerful and they make the local people feel so, so, I, I think insubordinate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and they have an answer for everything. This is a place where I grew up and I had been, have been hunting all my life. Um, it's a place where I had planned to hunt for the rest of my life. Um, and my uncle's been hunting there ever since, you know, ever since I've been 
hunting and he um he looked at me and he said you know he said this is a place that we're probably never going to be able to hunt and enjoy like we have uh, probably for the rest of our our life be uh, hunting fishing uh, mountain biking kayaking uh, but certainly the what dominates Garrett County are the aesthetics is the the unblemished natural beauty that uh, that area offers. It's very important to me to have the natural beauty and the environment intact around me because um, personally I have lived in the country all of my life and I wouldn't give it up for the world. I have not experienced anything like the turbines and the nuisances they have created in the past two and a half years. I would not put this up, I would not want anyone else to have to put up with it. Um, I think there should be stringent regulations and criteria put on the wind companies to have to, to adhere to stringent studies and guidelines regarding environment, environmental policies and procedures, nuisances, noise levels, strobe light, lighting effects. I'm, they should have to adhere to it all. Knowing, knowing what I know now about wind energy and wind power, um, if I had a magic wand and I could do something to change it, I would remove the wind power plant or the turbines, the wind power turbines. If I were queen for a day and regarding Myersdale Wind Facility, um, I would have all the turbines removed and the ridge top um, put back as it was. How would I change it to make it better? I told my nephew the other day how I would change it to make it better and he said, maybe you'd better not say that on a video. <laughs> and it's not green energy. <laughs> it's dollar, dollar, dollar. I would say if I had my choice, um, if, if it wasn't my home, uh, and if it wasn't the fact that I, I don't want to be run out, uh, I would probably leave. Unfortunately, I am, I am vested and I, I, I want to farm, so my answer to it is uh, if, if I can't raise, you know, if we can't raise cattle on our farm, uh, I think I'm going to switch, switch to swine and, you know, maybe, maybe go commercial. Uh, unfortunately, there probably is going to be a stench with that, but uh, we got a lot of turbines to fan it around, I guess. <laughs>